Hi, my name is Chris Grawl, and I'm going to show you how we set up our studios here at the house. The first issue is always cost. Uh, we set up Mindy's studio for about $301, uh, as you can see right here on the screen. Um, so we have bed foam, bookcases, another bookcase, some shelves, towel rack, and you can see the diagram on how we mounted it out. And here's what it looks like with Mindy working in it. So uh, then we've got my studio. And you can see that uh, we're right at around the same price. So when we set up our studios, the first issue is always going to be power. When we were, when we were building this house, I noted where the uh, power lines were in uh, that particular closet. We didn't know it was going to be a studio, but I was going to do other things in that, in that closet anyway. So uh, I knew where the power was, so when we decided to make it a studio, it was very easy for me to find power and just cut into the wall, install an outlet, drywall the, uh, put the drywall back into place, and then cover it up with memory foam. Nobody's going to see the patches that I, that I had to make. Now, when we did my studio, I cut into the wall looking for power and made several holes looking for power and couldn't find any. So outside this closet, there's a uh, power outlet. So I ran conduit along the base of the wall and cut a hole in the wall for, large enough for the plug to fit through and then ran the power down around to right behind me. So two entirely different ways to uh, run power into your studio. Both were relatively easy. Um, and once you start putting the foam up on the wall, which is step two, you'll never see all the destruction you did to the closet. So step two is foam. Um, the first time I set up foam in Mindy's studio, I, had, I started up high and worked my way down. The problem with that is all of the seams end up, ended up just being around eye level. When I installed this studio, I started from the ground up and all of the seams are above my head, so you can't really see them. And it makes a cleaner, more professional looking studio and it's happier to be in. Uh, when I went back in to do some things in Mindy's studio, I tore down the old uh, bed topper foam that I used and reinstalled it the way I did my studio. And it's a whole lot cleaner and, and more pleasant to be in. Um, so after you do your uh, do your foam, then in Mindy's studio it was a hardwood floor, so we laid bath mats down first for more cushioning and sound insulation, and then we laid a nice carpet on top of it for aesthetics. So we took care of the floor sounds. In this studio. This is off of what used to be a bedroom. It's now one of our it's now my office and uh, it was carpeted anyway. So we didn't have much to do in here as far as the floor goes. Uh, then we get into setting up uh, the furniture and your workflow. Now, this is Mindy's original configuration. Um, and we wanted to go with minimal furniture in there because it is a four by four closet. Uh, she had a big audio stand in there and she also had an easel in there that she was putting her iPad on. All of that was right in the doorway and it really made things inconvenient both getting in and getting out of the studio. So in this next configuration that I went to for her studio, I added some more furniture which cleaned up her workflow and I created a mount for uh, for a onstage iPad mount. So the onstage iPad mount fixes to uh, one of these microphone stands for musicians. So when I mounted her iPod mount, I used a towel rack mounted to the wall vertically and then just strapped the iPad mount to that. 
Uh, it's got little uh, thumb screws on it, very easy to put on, take off. So by mounting her iPad to the wall, it allowed us to pull that easel out of there and it makes things a whole lot easier for her and it really cleaned up her workflow. So everything she works on with Studio One is to the right and she reads directly in front of her and her microphone is to the left. Um, in my studio, I've got a different configuration here. I've got three and a half feet by five. So I really wanted to mount my monitor up on the wall for Studio One and have my iPad mount just to the to the left of that as I'm looking at it. Now what I did with this is I created a wall slider and I'll show you how I did that in a second. But basically when I'm in edit mode, the screen the monitor is right here in front of me and when I go to record mode, I slide the whole assembly to the right and the iPad is in front of me and the microphones to the left. So it it was fairly easy to do. There was a lot of learning involved, and you'll see my plan for that here in just a second. So, and here it is, the wall slider. So uh, this monitor I could mount. It had holes in it for uh, mounting it to uh, the wall. Mindy's monitor does not have that, so she had to she we had to stick with a desk mount for her. So the first step in Creating the wall mount is to, well, here actually here's the uh, here's the price breakdown on it. Um, it. Cost us about $100. So I used the same white shelving that I used for our desktop areas, and I cut it to size. Then in step two, I mounted uh, drawer hardware. And when you mount the drawer hardware, you've got to make sure that you leave you before you mount the drawer hardware, cut out a slot for where the cables are going to slide, because sometimes the cables stick out, oh, maybe a quarter to a half inch off the back of the monitor, and it needs a place to slide. The standoff from the drawer sliders just do, just isn't enough. So once I did that, I worked on the front slider, the front part of the slider. And I laid my monitor on its on its face, took a piece of paper, punched holes in the paper where the mounting screws are supposed to go, and then I laid it on top of the front board, marked my holes, drilled them out, then I mounted my chopped down towel rack, and then I mounted the monitor, put the whole assembly together, and then mounted it to the wall. So and here's some pictures of the slider both in edit mode and then in recording mode. Then the last thing I just have to show you, well, before I before I do that, uh, Mindy's uh, decibel floor is around negative 80 decibels. The decibel floor in this room is around negative 74. Um, she's got a higher ceiling, so I think that helps her out a whole lot more than the lower ceiling in this room. Um, but let's say you don't have two closets that you can dedicate to the cause. Uh, in that case, I use the House of Cards configuration. So before I got into this studio, uh, I was not using, I was not really into the recording that much. So House of Cards suited me just fine. Um, so to make the House of Cards, I took blue industrial styrofoam for insulation. It comes in a four by eight sheet. I took the same bed foam that I used in these studios and spray glued it to the big styrofoam sheet. Then in this picture, you can see I have some that are semi-permanent up against the wall. And now in this video, here I am setting up that studio for recording. It doesn't take very long to do. Um, and the sound floor in that ends up in that particular room 
around negative 74 decibels. And it is a bit of a pain to throw the styrofoam panels back and forth, and you can knock them over sometimes. Uh, then you've got your mic stand and all the other stuff to worry about. But as far as a low-cost, uh, fairly convenient studio in a room that you're going to be using for other purposes, I find that the House of Cards works very well. And when it has to be the guest room, then I just take those two panels and throw them in the garage. And boom, I have my guest room all over again. So I hope all of this helps you guys out. I hope it I hope you had fun watching it and have a great day.